You're not crazy. Your pain is not a pathology. Your pain makes sense. We are depressed and anxious in this culture for perfectly good reasons. We are living in a culture that does not meet our basic needs for connection, for meaning, for purpose, for a sense of the future. And that is the key reason why we're depressed. One in five Americans will take a psychiatric drug in their lifetime. And I began to think, could it really just be that there's something going wrong in our brains? So I went on this huge journey over 40,000 miles. I interviewed the leading scientists in the world. And when I was a teenager, until I went to my doctor, I had thought my depression was all in my head, meaning it was a sign of weakness, it was shameful. It's not in our heads. If you're depressed, if you're anxious, you're not crazy. You're a human being with unmet needs. I started researching what really causes depression and what really solves it for my book Lost Connections for a really personal reason. One was why was I still depressed? When I was a teenager I'd gone to my doctor and I'd explained that I had this feeling like pain was leaking out of me, I couldn't control it, I couldn't regulate it. Uh, and my doctor told me this story, he said, oh we know why you feel this way, there's this chemical called serotonin in people's brains, you're clearly lacking it, we'll give you these drugs, you'll feel better. So I started taking them, I felt an immediate boost, I felt much better. Within a couple of months, this kind of pain started to bleed back through. So I went back, he gave me a higher dose. Again, the, felt a boost, again the pain came back, gave me a higher dose. In the end, I was taking the maximum possible dose for 13 years. Um, and at the end of that, I still felt terrible. For the next 13 years, I thought it was, you know, all in my head, meaning it was a chemical imbalance. Actually, what I learned is, it's mostly not in our heads. There are biological factors that can make it worse. But actually, there are nine factors in the way we're living, seven of which are kind of things in our psychology and our environment that are making us depressed and anxious. For example, if you're really lonely, you're much more likely to become depressed. If you feel controlled at work, you're much more likely to become depressed. If you don't feel you have a sense of the future ahead of you, you're much more likely to become depressed. If you don't get to see the natural world, you're much more likely to become depressed. There had been a farmer in their community who one day had stood on a landmine in the rice fields where he worked and his leg was blown off. And they took him to hospital, they gave him an artificial limb and he went back to work in the rice fields. But apparently it's super painful to work in rice fields when you've got an artificial limb. They explained they went and sat with him. They listened to him. They realised that his pain made sense. They figured out, well, he's depressed for perfectly obvious reasons. They realised if they bought him a cow, he could become a dairy farmer. He wouldn't have to go into the situation where he was so depressed. Um, so they bought him a cow. Within a few weeks, he stopped crying. He was fine again. They said to Derek, so you see, doctor, that cow was an antidepressant. And while certainly chemical antidepressants have some value and should remain on the table, we need to radically expand the menu of options for people who are depressed and anxious to actually deal with the deep underlying reasons why we feel this way. We need to learn the lesson of the cow. There was a prison in Michigan, the state prison, that looks out, just by coincidence, they didn't design it this way, one part looks out over concrete, one part looks out over green space. When they studied this, they found that the people who looked out over green space had 23% fewer mental health problems than the people who looked out over concrete. There is loads of evidence that exposure to the natural world reduces depression and anxiety, and being deprived of it makes us more and more anxious. We're like animals in the zoo. We're like creatures in captivity. We've been deprived of our habitat, and it's one of the key reasons why we feel so bad. This amazing doctor called Dr. Vincent Felitti in San Diego has made, made a breakthrough in how we understand depression and anxiety in the mid-1980s in a slightly weird way. So he starts working with people who are extremely obese, like more than 400 pounds. And one day he had this kind of, what seems like a stupid idea, right? He was like, what would happen if they just stopped eating and we like medically supervised them, we gave them vitamins and nutrients, would they just lose weight? They started doing this, obviously, with a huge amount of medical supervision. And the crazy thing is it turned out it worked. They did, in fact, lose loads of weight. They went from being 400 pounds to, like, in the case of one woman, who I'm going to call Susan, 138 pounds. But then something happened that no one expected, which led to a breakthrough when it comes to depression. I'll give you an example from this woman, Susan. One day, she just freaked out. She got down to a healthy weight. She freaked out and just started stuffing her face and started going back to a really unhealthy weight. And Dr. Felitti sat with him and was like, well, what happened? Something had happened to her that hadn't happened to her in years. A man had hit on her. 
and it had really freaked her out. She started to say to Susan, well, Susan, um, when did you start to put on weight? It was when she was 11. He said, well, did anything happen when you were 11 that didn't happen when you were nine or 14? Or... She said, yeah, that's when my grandfather started to rape me. That's when Dr. Felitti discovered something. 55% of people in this program had been sexually abused and had started to put on weight in the wake of, their, wake of their sexual abuse. It turned out this thing that looked so irrational, their obesity, actually was perfectly rational. As Susan put it, overweight is overlooked and that's what I needed to be. A lot of the depression we're talking about is not caused by some spontaneous chemical imbalance in people's brains. It's caused by deep pain and grief in their childhood. And Dr. Felitti showed that if you give people a context where they can talk about this and they can see that they will not be judged, it leads to a really significant fall in depression and anxiety. The reason I found this so difficult is because uh, uh, when I was a child, I had experienced some quite extreme acts of violence. And I realized, I think one of the reasons why I clung for so long to this theory that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance is because I didn't want to think about that. I didn't want, I didn't want the anger that comes with that. But one of the things I would most want to say to anyone who's in that position is don't be afraid. You won't be judged if you talk to the right people and you can release the shame that you carry for this, which you shouldn't have, this should never have happened to you, you can actually experience a real reduction in depression and anxiety. You don't have to carry this with you. Don't believe the people who tell you that if you're depressed and anxious, you're just biologically broken. That will add to your shame. You, you, you deserve more love and more compassion, not less.